Good afternoon, everybody. I am Yashasvi, and these are my uh, project mates. This is Ajit, that's Shikhar, that's uh, uh, Sarthak, and that's Akash. Um, and uh, our project is about porting CRCPP applications on the web. Giving a quick overview, uh, we were tasked with converting desktop applications which were written in C++. We had to convert the logic which is written in those and uh, to their analog is JavaScript, so that we can host them on the web. One might wonder what the need of porting is, and it's quite trivial. Uh, a lot of applications are designed in C and C++ because of their superior speed and performance that they uh, provide. A lot of programs are made in C and C++ because of their superior speed, and uh, we want the speed in the web browser, and due to these reasons, a lot of standards like ASM, JSON, WebAssembly were created, which we'll explain going on through the presentation. Mostly everyone has uh, access to the web, and if applications are directly available there without the hassle of a installation, it's better. And a straightforward way to convert applications would be to directly look at the C, C++ file, understand them, and write the code again in JavaScript, but that would be slow. And hence, we need to port, and we use we make use of a very handy uh, tool called mscript. And I'll call upon Ajit to ex uh, give a brief explanation about mscript. Good afternoon, everyone. So we used mscript to port the C or C++ code. As written there, mscripten is a tool chain for compiling to ASMJS or WebAssembly built using LLVM. Whole mscripten has different parts, but the part that ports the C or C++ files is the mscripten software development kit that is also known as EMSDK. So EMSDK consists of three parts. That one is the Clang LLVM, other one is the mscripten compiler EMCC and the binary yarn. So this diagram can explain the mscripten SDK. We have the C or C++ source code and the LLVM and Clang part generates the LLVM bit code, and the bit code is given as an input to the EMCC compiler that generates the ASM.js file. Now, ASM.js is a subset of the JavaScript. Modern browsers can recognize the ASM.js, and there are tools in the browsers that optimize the code, so it runs nearly at the native speed. There is a dotted line there because the binary part is optional. WASM is uh, developed by Mozilla currently, and there are two problems with the WASM. One is that WASM does not support the doc document object model now, and for the porting, most of the time we need to uh, the logic for the download, upload, input, and there are no logic to input in JavaScript. So DOM is useful. So with WASM, you can't do that. Plus, WASM is not currently fully supported in Chrome. Sometimes WASM streaming fails. So we have worked with ASM.js. So this is a simple demonstration of a file. For example, this file will print, a, if we run this file and uh, build a executable file with the GCC or G++ compiler, this is the support, simple first porting example using mscript. To do the porting of the generation of the JavaScript file with the EMCC, we'll just write analogous to the GCC, like EMCC hello porting.c minus o hello porting.js. We can also generate an inbuilt HTML file, but the inbuilt HTML file is just like a template. It has a text area to display the what is output that will come in the executable file. So it is not useful for us because we have to interact with the DOM. So the overall development flow of the mscript can be explained with this file. We have the source code, we generate the BC file, and then we have generated the JS file. So most of the time we have to uh, think about how to interact with the functions that are generated in the JS file. So we have to write a front end to interact with the JS file. So we have the index.html and the JavaScript generated through the source code. So we serve all the files on the local server and then we can interact, test or debug it, it in the browser. So first example that we did was the PNG crush. So what is PNG crush? So PNG crush is a free and open source command line utility for optimizing PNG files. So what it does, the main C files, if we create a, a executable file, it takes input PNG and generates an output PNG, which is a compressed of that input PNG. We can explain the port with the following flow diagram. We have the source file. We use version 1.8.11. We generated the beat code and then the JS file. So the main thinking goes in the ma making of the index.html because inputting file is not easier in the JavaScript. So we made a front end like this. We allow the user to browse the file and then generate it upload it on the wave. All the printing that will be done in the console are printed in this text area and it says about how much reduction is done. So user can now download the compressed PNG through this download button. So this has been deployed on the GitHub and it's running there. Now Sikhar will tell about the port of GNU plot. Porting of GNU plot. Basically GNU plot is a command line program that generates 
two dimensional and three dimensional plots of functions data and data fits it is also used as a plotting engine in various third party applications like octave this is the basic development flow of porting of gnu plot porting process can be divided into five major tasks first getting the source file second generating the javascript file third making appropriate changes in the javascript file fourth designing the user interface and then testing it and finally deploying it on github we will be discussing each part in detail in the later slides first is getting the source file the source file are available on the official sourceforge repository and one can easily get the source file of gnu plot from there the second and one of the most important part of the porting is generating the js file this is basically consists of two major tasks one is generating the llvm bitcode and then generating the javascript file from this llvm bitcode for the first part for generating the llvm bitcode we basically use two commands em configure and em make em configure does the job of replacing gcc and g++ with emcc and e++ while generating the make file of the application what emake does is that it generates the llvm bitcode so basically these were the two commands we ran on the terminal to generate the file however when we ran the second command em make make from the base directory we faced an error due to the fact that em make did not had possess the permission to access the docs directory but since the docs directory basically contains documentation of gnu plot and if someone is using this uh, ported version of gnu plot we expect them to have at least a bit of knowledge about gnu plot so we just move into the source directory and ran the same command again so with this we got the bitcode we then took this file to another location which had the another directory which had another file called pre.js and then gave it an extension of .o we gave the extension of .o because mscript and only uh, recognizes .o as a bitcode after that this command was written in a terminal and this converted the bitcode into the javascript file after that uh, basically pre.js is a file which contains javascript code which we want to insert before the code generated by mscript and here pre.js contains main two functions one is a print function and one is a print error function basically whenever the module the mscript and finds any std out statement in its in then it what it does it calls module.print with the output it finds so basically whenever uh, print function is called with output it stores it in the out, out str variable and it is stored in the svg format which is used to store graphic files and later on in the html we print this uh, in the we print it in the html the second is the print error print error is used to print the error if any on the console from now the next part will be explained by jashashvi uh, so in the previous slide you would have noticed that this is the prior js file that we wrote and this is a file that should that is written by us and uh, it acts as a precursor to the file which is ported by mscript in itself and uh, you will notice a variable out string and this out string is basically the string in which we store the svg uh, image that is produced when we run commands from the uh, front end now moving on uh, making the ui was uh, not a problem the main problem is that we didn't know how to basically run the input that the user provides after a lot of tinkering around with and getting a lot of errors we figured out that uh, this particular gnu plot as a application when ported took files as an input where the file contained all of the uh, program code that uh, the user needed to run when we knew this we just created a text area in which the user could uh, uh, plug in their code and simply at the click of a button uh, we converted it to a file using the mscript and file system which is already provided which is very handy and we basically just use a few functions which is uh, def uh, defined inside it which is fs.create data file and fs.unlink to delete the files is already made and uh, as soon as we get that uh, we had to add a little bit more features which uh, were basically uh, gnu plot has a feature to allow other uh, data in other files to be used in other plots and this was done using the file reader api of javascript and the download version was done using the blob api and uh, these are the few examples that we used and now i'll like call upon sarthak to explain the port of sim avr normally we are all surrounded with microcontrollers all around so we all have microcontrollers programming and c which uses c programming embedded and uh, also we have avr programming uh, which are for ahead of embedded c so uh, firstly we need to look upon what's what's actually sim avr is so we have softwares like win avr atmel studio for avr programming keel microvision id and flash magic magic tool for c that we use for 8051 and 8031 types of microcontrollers this is how it works it plots the waveform uh, it is actually a simulation using jtk wave software that's actually how simavr works 
So now uh, we have ported it. It is open source software. So uh, the code base has been downloaded from its repository. And we have particularly chosen a particular uh, module that is uh, Atmel 8 Mega 1280 MCU uh, because its code base is uh, very large, almost having 250 plus header files and 70 plus C files. So 1280 we have ported and uh, its co code base uh, we have modified also because it was not working as desired. And we have made web, web responsive UI our own and then deployed. So these are all the changes that we have made according to our, this is the demo uh, of our Port. Uh, the input is LED program dot hex file. Hex file it takes, and uh, these LEDs are glowing just on the need because uh, that hex file contains the res uh, respective code for it. And we have the simulation speed and this terminal as a second approach to debug because its task is to debug the code if we are having any logical error inside. So these are two screenshots. We have we have spe uh, simulation speed uh, to control that, and uh, it actually displays this uh, how many cycles are being used in the program, and one cycle takes how much microsecond. Because uh, while writing the code, the programmer knows uh, like which instruction needs how many machine cycles. So it's easy to debug using this uh, command prompt or console. So how to use and debug, it's here, like uh, we can use to convert e ELF file because generally programmers have ELF files to, and this port uses hex file. So how to convert ELF using hex, we have this command and uh, the pinouts, we have shown the link of an official PDF and this to increase the simulation speed, we have the slider and to stop, we have a board. Major issues, these are what the major issues we faced and approaches we took, teamwork and GitHub repository, mail. And these are the use cases who will use that. So firstly, no wise programmers as a learner, anyone can use that to learn where the where he has committed the mistake uh, to debug using this port. Experienced programmers, obviously, because errors can come in uh, for anyone. Companies to test large programs or softwares, they can dump their hex file directly onto this port and it will simulate using the, that LEDs and console, it will print. And educational institutes, obviously. Limitations we have because it's not perfect. Firstly, it is particular uh, port or particular MCU that we are porting, not actual whole sim AVR. But uh, this particular module has been successfully ported. Uh, re rendering of LCD screen was not possible because uh, we are getting the command like what to print, but we are not having that particular LCD character on the web. So we need to uh, develop uh, to 16 by 2 LCD, actual virtual LCD there. So it's, it's limitations. And it obviously it includes in our further development, we'll work upon it. And also as discussed uh, with our mentors, uh, we have to include one editor so that uh, the programmer can write AVR code directly on, onto our web, web page. And uh, we can de uh, compile the Intuit hex file and it can be simulated. Text editor and uh, we have to make some modules out of it so that uh, like on a particular workspace, we can drag and drop. Thank you. So uh, we can show the demo on the Chrome. For which software you are showing? Same AR. Same AR, yeah, okay. Yes. So, till then I'll ask question, you continue. So, um, I want to know, did you also made some changes in the software? We have modified the original code base uh, okay. because it was not as desired. Uh, it, it works fine for the LEDs. But when we try to print the like how many machine cycles or uh, time delay is it's being taken. So for that we need to write our own code so that it can work fine. And you write your code in which language? C. C program. Yes. Okay. And then you updated the git repository yes, also yes, of yes, that yes. software? No. Uh, we have our, uh, our own git GitHub for, for, repository. Okay. For, okay, okay. Yes. So I want to understand this process. So there is a C program available. Yes. Okay. Software built in C available. Most of the C programming software work based on uh, some command, correct? Some command has to be passed. Mm -hmm. And some has GUI, like this one that you are going to show, also has a GUI, correct? Mm -hmm. For the first one I understood, PNG something was there, na? PNG it crash. is simply a image mm -hmm. as a parameter, that's all, correct? Nothing yes, else. Yes, it was compressing it. Ah, it, wa it does not have any GUI, so it's easy to port. But when you are talking about C programming, which has GUI, then how you made this front end? Uh, front end we have made in HTML and CSS and using the JavaScript that we are producing or generating through MScript in uh, by compiling through uh, all those C files or C++ file or header file that we are having. So we are communicate, we are making worker.js to communicate between that HTML that we have written and backend that semavr.js that the MScript in is producing. Okay, so there is a logic yes. written in C. 
then your front end built in js hmm. both are unconnected correct hmm. then how you connect them uh, logic is being converted to js by m scripting only Java. we are writing html for it yes okay so the question that you asked before as in how the logic is being converted mm -hmm. what happens is m scripting makes a global variable called module Okay. Now this module stores all of the functions in a different format like it converts all of the functions that are written in the C++ programs and it stores it as uh, uh, functions of this greater module object which mm. it creates. So we need to figure out which function to call according to what input we get. Okay. So um, in the beginning you mentioned that if we write all the logic in JavaScript it will not be very good means the performance will be very yes, low sir. correct so now what is happening it is converting that sir, logic in, into some other language uh, no, no, not, not necessarily sir what happens is uh, m script in makes two files hmm. one is the basic javascript which has a definition of the functions okay and then another called the mem file the mem file stores the actual logic of the function and then mm. because it's a bit code file it's binary okay. file it's so easier that is to converted read. into bit yeah. and dot yeah. o file is yes. called so the function is called but after that the do, dot the o file is called yeah okay. the, the function is read and then it's uh, the output is given mm. back uh, so i was thinking what is the size of this js file that is created that was one of the limitation that we showed in the xenoplot uh, one slide was missed there and the size generated is around for the softwares like xenoplot it is around 5.5 MB and for the CMABR also it's, it's big file. So we can work on that. There are optimization levels in the M script and so if you optimize more then there are loss of functions. Some functions are not present then we, we have the problem. So we, so till so now the file is large. So if so not JavaScript then how will you implement uh, something like PNG crush on the web? Then we have if to write the logic no, in you, pure if GS. You don't, if no if you don't have to use JavaScript. Can you communicate with the How? with the C program written on the server, and you can you know just communicate with an API. So for that we can yeah. use the WASM uh, so, so web assembly. Is, no, what is really happening is that the applications are so tightly coupled, and then now you cannot separate it out. That yes, becomes a problem. So mm. so these are older applications, yes, Uniplot sir. and huh. other. Th so there are applications which have, uh, which are loosely coupled, and if there are API, API-based applications, and which are desktop-based, there is a possibility that you can convert separately these two things: the front end as a JS and the back end. You keep the back end at the back. And uh, yes, sir. Uh, for CMABR also, we uh, when we made that console terminal, so we had to write the logic in C file only because uh, writing directly or uh, that logic in JS is not like. Is, it's not possible. So we had to write the logic in C only and then we have to compile so that it can come to JS file. Okay, and one more thing, one of uh, the, the main points that you said in one of your first slides was that uh, the speed factor, right? That if you write it in JavaScript, then it will be slower. So you could have done a short comparison saying how fast the C program runs and how fast a similar one in pure JavaScript runs and then how fast is your converted one with this um, uh, so for that continuously MS scripting is being upgraded so they only the developer of it claims that uh, the MS, the JS that is being generated by MS scripting mm -hmm. uh, has almost similar speed at till date is, it has achieved uh, just like the native C code and, and are there some organizations that are using these kind of tools okay so okay. there are various projects that are using that no I got it regarding the simulation of the microprocessor that is good but apart from that, the other three are not so, uh, you know, promising. But yeah, that's the, the this so one but is right, uh, writing logic, simple, complete yeah. logic in JS is not like hmm. uh, it's very te tedious. Yeah, yeah. So companies are preferring to write in C and then uh, to port it. Hmm. Uh, sir, uh, MS Scripting current, currently uh, doesn't support Java uh, uh, due to some garbage collection. It uh, it claims MS Scripting, so it doesn't support that. Okay, thank you, sir.